Hello, this is George Simmons with MLC CAD Systems. I'm an applications expert at our Dallas Fort Worth office in Texas. I'm going to explain the difference between the engraving toolpath and what the expectations are for the engraving toolpath versus just machining with the simple 2D contour toolpath. What I've got is I've got letters that the letter M makes a closed chain of entities. So um, the letter A has a chain inside of a chain. So it's going to leave the, the, the hole in the A. It's going to leave it as an island sticking up. So this is, this is the nature of the engraving toolpath. So I'm going to pick uh, a chamfer mill with a small diameter flat on the tip. Go to the engraving parameters. I'm going to give it a depth um, minus point two. That should work because the diameter of the tool is a half inch. So we don't want to go 250. That would encroach on the the amount of cut I can get with that tool. But we can go as deep as 200, but it may not need all of it. Here in the fishing, uh, roughing and finishing, we're not going to rough it. We're just going to we're just going to cut at the on top. We're going to put the edge of the cutter, um, so the 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 tool will make contact with both walls inside of the chain at all times, um, and go up and down in Z. This is a three a three axis cut, and um, so this is what that tool path looks like. You can see it's moving up and down. It takes the tool tip up and down the corners to miter those. If we back plot this, you can see. Now he moves up and down in Z as he's moving around. Um, this looks really good in Verify. This is usually a little too nice, really, for uh, scribing letters on a part for identification or heat lot numbers. I'll go ahead and play that. Um, that looks really nice. If you want the letters raised instead of cut into the material, we'll do a little bit of a, a different strategy. So I've got a MLC logo here. So again, I've got, I don't have stick letters. I've got uh, uh, letters that will have a uh, surface area, a close chain. And then I put a chain of entities around them. So I'm going to machine between the outer boundary and the, uh, and the lettering in the uh, engraving toolpath. Again, I'll window select the letters. I'll pick an approximate start point and I'll tell it we're done here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick a smaller cutter. I don't need as big a diameter tool as we had, and just 20 thousandths worth of tip, a little bigger flat on the tip. Um, I could possibly rough this out with a flat end mill and then come into the engraving options and, uh, and do a remachining strategy if you so choose. Okay. I'm going to give him a depth of just minus 0.02. And I'll just go absolute because Z0 is the top of my part here. For the roughing and finishing, you can tell that this is very similar to a pocket toolpath because I've got this roughing strategy that we would use in our classic pocket toolpath. We'll rough first, then finish. Left to right's the way to go. This looks good in verification as well. And finally, whenever I get I get the phone call about I'm trying to use the engraving toolpath on stick letters to scribe some letters on a part or part number, um, the engraving toolpath is not the one you want to use whenever we've got just plain old stick letters like this. I'll show you how we can do this very easily. If we go to the contour toolpath, I'm going to window select my geometry, and that's these stick letters here. Start there. The tool I want to use, I'll just grab an eighth inch solid carbide two fluted ball nose end mill. Seems to work pretty good as long as your letters are about oh, three eighths or an inch tall or so. In the cut parameters, I'm going to turn the compensation off. I want the center of the tool to follow the geometry we pick. The lead in and lead out. I'm not using compensation, so I'm just going to totally disable it. I want the tool to plunge at the beginning of the stick letter and machine across there and retract without doing a, a lead in and lead out. The linking parameters, zero is the top of the part, and as a cut depth, I'm going to put minus 0 .003, just about three to five thousandths deep, should be plenty. Fix the feed plane and the retract height, and I'm just going to tell it okay, and we'll see um, our tool path.
Looks like the, the center of the tool is following the geometry. This is what we really are asking for whenever we're asking to engrave. Really, this is what I would call scribing the letters into the part. Hope you found this helpful. Thank you and have a great day.